Well, good afternoon, everyone. We all ready to start? Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I'd like to address some questions that we have been hearing around the use of personal protective equipment in schools. The government of Saskatchewan has procured, as I've said before, six million disposable masks for school divisions in Saskatchewan uh, with an investment of $2.3 million. The purchase represents a supply of masks for school divisions until the end of the calendar year. Under current guidance in Level 1 of Saskatchewan's Safe Schools Plan, mask and PPE usage recommendations are in place in many of Saskatchewan's school division plans. Our government has been carefully monitoring the release of the federal guidelines by Public Health Agency of Canada and feedback from provincial stakeholders, including the Saskatchewan Medical Association, in regards to the safe return to schools. In consideration of those guidelines and feedback, Saskatchewan's Chief Medical Health Officer and the Ministries of Education and Health are actively considering a mandatory masking policy under Level 2 of Saskatchewan's Safe Schools Plan. As the situation with COVID-19 in Saskatchewan is very fluid, the Safe Schools Plan provides consideration to changes and updates as needed as accounted for within the four levels. Under Level 2 of the plan, mask usage can be implemented under the direction of the Chief Medical Health Officer in consultation with public health, either regionally or provincially, based on the most up-to-date situation and specific scientific information that's available. The initial order of 6 million masks will be delivered and distributed to school divisions before the start of the school year, which is set to begin as early as September 1st, depending on local school calendars. These masks will be made available to students, to teachers and staff at the beginning of the school year and on a daily basis. We know that parents, students and teachers want to return to school safely and our government is committed to continuing to work with school divisions and our partners in education to make sure schools are safe and that our kids can come back to school again. Thanks very much. I'm happy to take any questions that you have. So right now masks are not mandatory only if it goes to level two and, and in what way would we know that we hit level two? Well, level two will be determined by in consultation with the chief medical health officer. Uh, currently, the plan is to return to school under level one, but as I've said, there's been some consultation between the SMA uh, with uh, representatives of the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education to determine whether or not uh, that should change. Certainly, there were some guidelines that came forward from the federal government today, uh, which was recommending mask usage on the return to school. Those are all things that are being considered in consultation with our partners in education and our partners in the medical community to determine whether or not school should start at level two. So those are ongoing conversations. I can tell you that the response planning team, which uh, is made up of school board trustees, the SDF, the teachers union, and uh, um, the Ministry of, of uh, Education are all giving some consideration to the new guidelines that have come down from the federal government, including looking at information that's coming from other jurisdictions so that we can make sure that our kids go back to school as safely as possible in September. But as of right now, it's still level one, no matter. It's currently, it's currently at level one, but again, there are some conversations going on with healthcare professionals and education professionals to determine whether or not uh, that will change. We've always said that this, the plan that's been put forward uh, by the province uh, and the local plans that have been put together by the school divisions, and I want to thank them for all their very hard work, is very fluid. And so depending on uh, the recommendations that come from our chief medical health officer, uh, those determinations will be made in terms of moving between levels. Minister Wyatt, was it actually Dr. Shahab's recommendation to the government that mask use not be mandated in schools? Or was his preference to have mandatory masks off the hop and this plan was kind of a compromise between what Dr. Shahab had wanted and what government had wanted in regards to making those mandatory masks, uh, uh, I guess, right off the hop? Well, we've always taken the advice of the Chief Medical Health Officer, and I think it's fair to say that the Chief Medical Health Officer has given this province excellent advice since the beginning of the pandemic. I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with that. So the advice that we have received from the Chief Medical Health Officer, based on the plans that have been reviewed by the RPT and by Public Health and his office, are not recommending masks, and, and he's uh, that's that part of his recommendation at the present time. But again, as I've said, that could change. Do you have enough masks right now? And is a shortage of masks what's responsible for not having the masks mandatory on September 1st? No, that has nothing to do with it. What we did was uh, we had uh, asked for a request for qualifications, request for proposals that closed at the end of August. 
Once that closed, we had our preferred supplier, which we had provided uh, that information to the various school divisions, and that's when we placed the order for six million masks. We're expecting them to be delivered uh, in the third week of August so that we can have them available for the school divisions for the beginning of the year should level two be, uh, be, uh, uh, be implemented. The other thing I want to just make a clear point of is the school divisions have been acquiring PPE for some time as well. We know that, uh, I'll use Saskatoon Public as an example, others certainly as an example, uh, that they've been acquiring masks and shields uh, for distribution to their school, uh, to their school uh, professionals, teachers in the classroom. So uh, school divisions have been acquiring PPE as well. We wanted to make sure that if we went to level two, uh, with the plan that we were able to supply the masks to the school divisions across the province so that they could comply with any change in that level. What about concerns of physical distancing in classrooms with you know, some fairly large class sizes? Well, there are certainly some large class sizes in Saskatchewan. One of the things that's been emphasized in the local plans is, is, is some physical distancing. We know that a lot of school division plans call for separate pods to be in those classrooms so that we can minimize the amount of contact between students in those classrooms. Currently, uh, there's no restrictions on the amount of class sizes. If we ended up going to level three, there's requirements within that level to, uh, to amend that to make sure that class sizes are smaller in the event we have to go there. We certainly hope we don't. But at the present time, uh, the local plans certainly have accommodated for that and creation of pods and, and those kinds of things. What, uh, do, you, do you have any strategy in place for immunocompromised uh, kids going back to school? Well, we sure do. And one of the things that the local plans speak to, and we've spoken to this on a number of occasions, for immunocompromised children that don't want to return to school, if that's the choice of their parents, that there will be arrangements put in place between school divisions and those parents to make sure that children get a quality education. There's there's a number of options that are available, whether that's pods, uh, individual pods, whether that's remote learning. Uh, there's a number of ways we can do that, but certainly that's been a significant consideration. We've heard a lot about that, but as part of the local plans, and I've spoken to this on a number of occasions, school divisions will be working with their parents in the case of immune compromised children to make sure that they get quality education in a safe way. What do you have to say to parents and teachers who say this plan isn't safe and kids aren't a priority? Well, I would disagree. I mean, I think the plan is a good plan. The plans certainly that have been put forward by the school divisions are comprehensive, and there's a lot of room for movement. Again, we have relied on the advice of the Chief Medical Health Officer, not only in the review of the plans, uh, but in the implementation of the plans. And they've been reviewed by school board trustees. They've been reviewed by representatives of the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation. So I'm quite comfortable with the plans. Uh, I know that th this is a passionate issue for, for many parents and for many people in the community. We want to make sure we get this right, that we have the right balance. This isn't just about educating children. This is about making sure that they can return in as normal a way as possible, having regard to their uh, mental health, having regard to the requirement for socialization, all the things that are important to children as they're growing up. So we're not just really focusing on what the educational opportunities, but we're talking about making sure we strike a balance that deals with the whole child. There are currently no plans for uh, adjustments for the school bus capacity. Do you see that changing at all? Well, the requirements in the uh, in the initial plan will be for uh, uh, for children in various uh, in family settings to be seated together. That seating plans be established in the buses so that we can properly contract uh, contact trace. There may well be some changes to that plan. Whether or not the chief medical health officer decides that we're going to level two, or whether school boards decide that they want masks on buses because those are children are in close proximity those will all be things that we think about but transportation is a key element of making sure that we get kids to school safely we've encouraged parents to the extent that they can to transport their own children to school but you may well see some changes with respect to protocols around transportation as well you know minister ryan the saskatchewan medical association which represents doctors in the province had said that they would rather see a restrictive kind of plan put in place with the restrictions loosely you know, kind of gradually loosened as the school year goes on, if, if, if allowed. Why is the government kind of taking an approach that is the opposite of what the Saskatchewan Medical Association is recommending? Well, I've read the uh, news release from the, from the Saskatchewan Medical Association yesterday. I know that they met with Dr. Shahab yesterday, uh, met with leaders of uh, the education sector within the Ministries of Education and the Ministry of Health. Certainly the opinions of the uh, doctors of this province is important in terms of establishing the protocols and the practices that we need. But I do want to remind you that Dr. Shahab is the Chief Medical Health Officer. So 
the consultations that he's having with his professionals, that he's having with his colleagues across the country, other chief medical health officers, including Dr. Tam, uh, in terms of ensuring that we have the right protocols in place. Those conversations will continue, but input that we're receiving from, uh, from the SMA will be important in that consideration. And as I've mentioned, the RPT, we're hoping the response planning team will be meeting uh, very, very quickly to have a look at what those recommendations are in light of what the federal government has said and in light of what a number of other provinces have done. I said this yesterday that the situation in terms of community transmission of COVID-19 is different in other provinces than it is in Saskatchewan. Certainly Alberta who went with a, man, a mandatory masking policy in schools and Ontario have, have different challenges in their communities than we do in Saskatchewan. I think that has a lot to do with the reasoning behind Dr. Shahab's initial advice to us uh, through his, through his uh, consultation that masking not be included as an initial first step. But again, these are all things uh, that we'll be considering. This is a very fluid situation and we'll be responding to that. How can people in the province kind of look to Dr. Shahab and, uh, and take his kind of word uh, when people, other doctors, are saying the opposite? You know, how can members of the public kind of trust the province's chief medical health officer when other doctors in the province are, are saying the opposite? Well, I'm not sure that they're saying the opposite. They're, what they're saying is that they think that we need to start school at a bit of a higher level than what's been recommended uh, through the initial uh, level one recommendations. And again, we've always said that this is a very fluid situation. I think the province has been well served uh, by the advice that Dr. Shahab has given us over the last number of months as the pandemic has started and has uh, reached the place where it is today. And I think I have, I can tell you, I have every confidence, the government has every confidence in the advice that Dr. Shahab is giving us. Having that said that, uh, there certainly are considerations and other conversations that need to pay, take place. The key for the government of Saskatchewan and for the people of this province is to make sure that students go back to school in as safe a way as possible and in as normal a way as possible. And so we'll continue to look for advice. But again, Dr. Shahab is the chief medical health officer in this province and uh, the advice that he's been giving us so far has been very good and I have no reason to doubt the advice that he's been giving us now. You know, I'll read you a quote from the SMA president, quote, mask use is proven to reduce the spread of COVID-19. The evidence is strong, and for that reason, the SMA has been advocating the use of reusable masks whatever social distancing is difficult to maintain. While masks are on their own will not completely prevent the spread of the virus, we believe there is a very, there is very good way to make schools safer places for children, youth, teachers, and support staff. You know, that's directly from the SMA. They're, they're saying masks should be in place, why isn't your government kind of heeding this advice? Well, as I've said before, we t uh, take the advice of the chief medical health officer, but I've also said that there are conversations that are going on, that Dr. Shahab has met uh, with the SMA yesterday. We certainly respect the opinion of medical doctors in this province to weigh in on this situation. So uh, there may well be a change in the direction that we're going to take based on the advice that we're getting. And as I've said, we've looked at the federal guidelines uh, in a number of ways to see whether or not that's going to affect uh, the situation. Again, this is very fluid and things could change. I've said that from the very beginning. And so it's no surprise that those conversations are taking place. And uh, depending on how those conversations roll out, you may well see a change. So Does anyone else have a question? We'll take one more. Why, why later than now? You know, like parents are upset, parents are concerned, the SPF is concerned, the SMA is concerned. Why isn't the government just taking that advice and being like, you know what, September 1st, we're going to make masks mandatory. Is this a political optics thing? Like, why isn't the government just making masks mandatory as we've seen in a lot of other jurisdictions? Well, I'm not sure you've seen it in that many jurisdictions, but having said that, this is not a political issue for us. This is an issue of making sure that children go back to school as safely as possible and we'll continue to have conversations with Dr. Shahab uh, and uh, and his based on his conversations that he's having with the SMA and other professionals. As I've said, he is been actively engaged with his uh, colleagues across the country uh, and we're encouraged by those conversations. We'll continue to have those conversations with him and his office uh, in consultation with educational leaders in Saskatchewan to make sure that we fulfill our goal of making sure children go back to school as safely as possible. I might just add one point and I've said this before. I mean these plans that have been prepared locally, I'm very pleased with the work that's been done by the by the local school division. Certainly uh, local school divisions are in the best position to be able to provide advice uh, based on their local conditions uh, and so I think that that work that's been done by the school divisions has been very good. The plans that have been provided though uh, have all been reviewed by the STF and by the school boards association so I find it a bit disingenuous that the STF would complain about plans that 
that they've had a look at and they've had an opportunity to comment on. So I'll leave it at that. Again, I just finally say that we want children to return to school as safely as possible and as normal as possible, and we'll continue to take the guidance from the Chief Medical Health Officer. I know that his consultation with his professionals, with education professionals and health professionals, will continue. And as a fluid situation, you may well see some changes uh, to the plan in September. What are you going to say to parents if kids get sick? Well, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a difficult question to answer. I mean, what we want to make sure of is that kids are as safe as possible. We always know that there's challenges in school settings. We have flu going through the schools. Uh, we have a number of things going through the schools, and we expect school divisions and parents to act when it comes to those kinds of things. But we, we want to make sure that children are as safe as possible, having regard to the whole child, not just their socialization, but their mental health and their educational opportunities. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.